Alright, this is lesson 1.5, volumes of right pyramids and right cones. Last lesson we, of course, looked at the surface area, now we're going to talk about the volume. I usually find that students find the volume um, easier to calculate. Uh, so hopefully we've already done a uh, example involving some sand, and uh, now we're going to um, push on. So the volume of a right prism, I know for a fact you did this um, in grade 8, uh, is three times the volume of a right pyramid with the same base and the same height. So looking at this little example here, what I'm saying is assuming that the height's the same on both of these, um, the base area is the same, what you can do is you can fit basically three of those inside of that object. All right? So you're going to see how the formulas are related. If you look right at the top one, the volume of a prism is volume is equal to area times the height. And this one is one-third area times height because, of course, there's three of those in here. Okay. Um, so let's uh, talk about some examples and uh, practice using this little equation. All right, so the first one says, calculate the volume of this right square pyramid to the nearest cubic foot. And if you recall, we need to know what the area of the base is, and we need to know what the area of the, um, or sorry, we need to know what the height is. Well, if you look closely, and this is what's going to get a lot of students, is this 7 is actually the slant height. It's not the actual height. So if I kind of take this triangle and blow it out right here, you'll see that this is what we actually have. The seven's on the outside. The height would go in here. All right, so what we can do is we can use Pythagoras, of course, to uh, figure out what the height is. We have h squared plus 1 squared, put the right angle in, is equal to 7 squared. h squared plus 1 is equal to 49, or h squared is equal to 48. And we're just going to leave h as the square root of 48 for right now. So that's what the height is. Well, now, of course, we can use that to assist ourselves. We know that to calculate the volume, we have volume is equal to one-third times the area. I like to put a little b to denote that it's the area of the base times the height. So we have one-third. All right, what I know is that if you come back up to the question, it does say it was a square pyramid, so that the base must be 2 times 2 or just 2 squared. Either would be fine. The height is root 48. Now, putting these into our calculator, we will see that we get... See, we have one third times four, so that's the same thing as having four thirds. I'm just going to go four thirds, and then I will times it by root 48. Okay, and we get approximately 9.23, and I believe since they wanted you to round to the nearest cubic foot, we'll just say that that is approximately nine um, cubic feet, like so. Okay, first example. Turn the page. Next one we're going to do is um, working with the volume of a right rectangular pyramid um, again here. Uh, I think you'll find this one a little bit easier, a little bit less work. Determine the volume of a right rectangular pyramid with the base dimensions 3.6 times 4.7 and the height's given. So this one's um, a little bit easier. Uh, this would be a good one for you to try on your own just to make sure we're good to go. Volume is equal to one third area of the base times height. I do like you to write that down. Area of the base is 3.6 times 4.7, and the height is 6.9. Very, very quick, we can do this. And we get one third. 3.6 times 4.7 times 6.9, like so. And we get 38.9. I think it asked you for the nearest tenth of a cubic meter this time, so we can say 38.9 meters cubed. Sure, you saw that part right up there. All right, very, very basic as far as dealing with volume. Uh, I don't think you guys will find this lesson uh, too tough. So, um, the volume of a right cone is what we're going to push on to. As we just discovered, the volume of a right cone also shares um, the property above. So, hopefully, when we were playing around with uh, the little sand or the water, you saw the same thing here. Um, what this means is that if you have a cylinder that has the same height and base, you can fit in three of those cones. So you see how those formulas are related. Okay, so determine the volume of this cone to the nearest millimeter. Well, we're once again going to start out with the equation. Volume is equal to one-third. The area of the base times the height. Of course, this time the area of the base is a 
circle. So we have one third pi r squared, so pi, the radius, the radius being, uh, be careful here, the radius is of course 4, All right, and the height is 13. We will punch these into our calculator. We have 1 third times pi, so make sure you use the pi symbol, times 4 squared, times 13. And uh, to sit in the nearest cubic millimeter, we get 218 millimeters cubed. If you haven't noticed, always we are using cubic meters, or sorry, cubic units whenever we're dealing with volume. All right, there's one on the back page here. Uh, this one, especially for you honors guys, um, if you're in one of my honors classes, uh, you may find it um, doable. Um, so maybe try this one on your own. If you think it's a little bit too daunting, then uh, just watch it. So if you're trying it on your own, go through and uh, give it a try. Uh, just pause it right here and then maybe fast forward to the answer to see how you did. Okay. So a cone of a height of 8 meters and a volume of 300 cubic meters uh, oh, it's basically saying that that's what uh, is going on. Determine the radius of the base of the cone to the nearest meter. So you may want to uh, draw yourself a picture. For this one, it doesn't really help a lot. I still like to start with my equation. Volume is equal to one third the area of the base times the height. Uh, if you want to even go one further, you can write out what the area of the base is. Of course, it's pi r squared h. All right. And now we can start substituting in. They tell you the volume was 300, so we can put that in. Substitute with brackets to let me know what's going on. Uh, the radius. Well, we don't know what the radius is. That's what we're trying to figure out. So we'll just leave that as r squared. And we have a height of 8. So if you haven't noticed what, uh, why this question is a little bit more difficult, it's because you're going backwards. They give you the volume and they're looking for one of the dimensions. So we have to use a little bit of algebra in order to um, isolate for r squared. All right. So this r squared is the important thing. We're trying to get it by itself. So uh, let's deal with the 1 third and the pi first here. If we want to get rid of the 1 third, what we have to do is we're going to multiply by something called its reciprocal, or we can cross multiply. What I'm going to do here is if I multiply this side by 3, 1 third times 3, those cancel, but then I have to do it to the other side. So now I have 900 is equal to pi r squared times 8. Well, at this stage, I'm going to combine the 8 and the pi together. We can get, get rid of those. How we get rid of those? Since they're in the numerator, we can just divide them out. So I'll divide out 8 pi. That pi cancels here, cancels there. So, now you're going to see, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to divide 900 by 8 pi. I'm going to leave that till the last step. So right now I have r squared is equal to 900 divided by 8 pi. Okay. Lastly, and you guys should remember this, just like through Pythagoras, how do we get r by itself? Rather than r squared, we have to take the square root of both sides. So r will be equal to the square root of 900 divided by 8 pi. And you've got to be very, very careful here when using your calculator. This is where students will often not go wrong. So we'll open up the square root sign. Okay. We'll deal with the numerator first. We'll go in numerator 900 divided by. And now in the denominator, since there's two terms there, 8 and a pi, it's just using brackets for the denominator. So I'll go 8. And I'll put in the pi symbol. We'll close off those brackets. So if you look, those two brackets close each other off. And now I have to close off a bracket for the front. And see if it's reasonable again. We should expect, if we're having a volume around 300, that the radius is going to be probably fairly small considering the height of this. So we got, uh, I think they were asking you to determine it to the nearest meter. We have a radius that is very, very close to being 6 meters. Now, don't make sure you don't put it as, um, as meters cubed or anything crazy like that, because, of course, uh, the radius is just a straight dimension, one dimension, so it's just meters. All right, that concludes that lesson. Uh, fairly straightforward. You're basically just uh, using the uh, appropriate formulas. Sometimes when you work backwards, though, you're going to have to be careful, so get after it.